We got another episode of the Barnacle Inspiration series for you today. And today we're going to be talking all about steampunk related mocks. And we've got a fair few examples today to show you. So let's take a look at what exactly is steampunk if you're not too sure of the term. We just want a cheeky refresher. Let me catch you up now. So, taking a bit of a read from Wikipedia here, steampunk is a retro futuristic subgenre of science fiction, and it incorporates technology and the aesthetic designs inspired by 19th century industrial steam powered machinery. So, kind of a lot of what you're seeing on your screen right now. It's kind of a little bit of a mix of the old and to some degree the new, but kind of not quite so modern and futuristic it's sort of a more sort of outdated future with more gears and steam powered uh, machinery in olden times it's cool it's a really cool aesthetic a lot of steampunk works are often set in a more uh, like alternative history uh, of typical 19th century british uh, victoria era it's a future where steam power kind of maintained its mainstream usage. So, yeah, a bigger focus on steam and steam power and all that sort of stuff. And we'll go into a bit more detail with that as we cover more of these mocks. But that's the general kind of aesthetic. And if the words didn't make sense, hopefully the pictures did. It's kind of that sort of look and feel. One quick thing, of course, before we start. Been meaning to catch up on these for some time now, but... Wanted to give a shout out to one of the patrons, which is Poor Disadvantaged. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Very much appreciate that, of course. You did in fact become a patron quite some time ago, but I didn't give you your shout out until now. But I'm going to be making my way through the list of patrons who have donated and I'll be giving them a shout out at the start of the next few Barnacle Inspiration series episodes. So stay tuned for that. And of course, if you're interested in supporting us over on Patreon, would very much appreciate that. But no pressure there, if you want to, would very much appreciate it. But let's start the episode, shall we? So let's take a look at a few steampunk mocks. The first one is by Eo Okanonen and is called Thugrot Thunderthroat's Mechanical Dragon. That's a cool name. So what's so awesome about this is, well, first off, repeating a lot of those pipe or macaroni piece elements. You can see them specifically on the whiskers on this dragon here. Look fantastic uh, layering them in that manner. But you can also see them in a couple other spots on the mock, kind of more towards the actual cockpit on this mock. You can see a couple of them there towards the front of that part. Uh, it looks really cool. Um, so one, it's always cool to kind of repeat pieces when you are using them on a mock, just because you get a bit of consistency throughout. Having sort of repeated elements makes things just sort of flow together more nicely and look more unified and coherent. It's, it's always good. But uh, it's also cool as well, just using those pieces to create the whiskers on the dragon there. It's just a, a really nice design and a great way of kind of playing around there. Um, adds a lot of charm to the mock too, giving him those big goofy whiskers like that. I like it a lot. I also like the big mouth on this uh, dragon here using that Akimu shoulder piece. Uh, just gives him this nice sort of open mouth uh, look and feel. It's just a bit more unique, just a bit nice. Going on to the tail on this mock, I really like how it's quite simplistic. Just, you know, basic you know, CCBS bones and... and uh, and shell pieces there but what's so cool about it is that it's that double ccbs bone uh to just to sort of buff it out a little bit more and i always think that's something to to keep in mind and never forget that you can double up on your hero factory bone pieces it's not too difficult to connect them you just get some that have the uh, axle holes in the actual bone itself uh, and you find uh, a way of physically connecting them with uh, some different lift arms and pieces like that uh, or they're not actually even connected, and you just sort of make sure that they slit into another part of the mock, and uh, you do get that, that double-jointed look like that. I always think that personally looks, yeah, really cool. And, and never forget that you can do that too. It's a great way of just sort of buffing out the design. You would see it in actual Hero Factory sets from like Witch Doctor to Black Phantom where they'd double up on the Hero Factory bone just to give it a bit more uh, girth, as it were. Um, so I like that a lot. It's a good design. Never forget you can do that. So yeah, this mock is also just so cool because one, it would work so well as just uh, your typical dragon, but I love the little personal touch of adding in the minifigure on the back and making this a mech of some kind that's, uh, it's just kind of thinking outside the box and it's making it way more unique and fun. Um, so that's always something you could do with your stuff. Maybe you, you are also building a dragon or you're building, you know, some, some sort of creature of some kind. Uh, maybe you could put a cockpit on it and make it uh, a minifigure mech of some kind. Uh, could be like Power Rangers and they've got some like, you know, rhino mech thing uh, that could work very well as a rhino, but could also work as a mech, you know, that could be cool. So I like that addition there. So nice work. Let's go into the next mock. This is by Cameron and is called Steambot. So what's so cool about this is it uses the Lego boat piece 
uh, as kind of well, sort of the bulk of this mock, kind of a more dominant piece that's being used here. Uh, and I love that. You know, there's there's some Lego pieces out there that exist that, you know, I, I never like to kind of group pieces in the thing of, you know, oh, that's impossible to use elsewhere, because that's never true, and this is a perfect example of that. But you take a look at that Lego boat piece, and it's kind of, you know, a boat piece. It's, it's difficult to use in other areas, because, well, what else are you going to use it for, you know? And I love seeing mocks like this that really, you know, make it clear that uh, you can do anything uh, if you if you set your mind to it and you you think outside the box. Much like Cameron's done here, you get a very very unique and very different mock uh, with a beautiful look to it because you are using some of those weeder and obscure pieces and playing around with them, seeing how you can use them and make them just look perfect. Uh, so so props to you on that. Yeah, that's always um it's always cool, uh, and I love. The uh, repeating these two by two round plate elements here and stacking them on top of each other like that to get this smokestack coming out of the mock. Uh, the smokestack in black there looks fantastic, and you know it's steampunk. You know it's always helpful to have uh, a sort of smokestack coming out of the, some sort of chimney or or uh, exhaust pipe or something on the on a creation. It's uh, just a great way of appealing to the aesthetic. You know it's great. And speaking of aesthetic, I love the idea of it. Uh, yeah, having this brown shell and these you know, six legs coming out of it, uh, it just looks really, really cool and is, is different, you know, it's cool. So fun little design here and a great way of playing with pieces. Uh, very much fitting in with that steampunk aesthetic too, more specifically because of the smokestack, but I guess also slightly to do with the colour scheme, giving it that more uh, industrial mechanical look, which was also sort of the case on the last mock. But let's move on to this mock, which is by Logan W, and it's called Vapos Master of Steam. So I think what's really key with this mock is the color scheme. The golds, the browns, the mechanical grays, and the chrome silver, they very much fit that steampunk look from a lot of the concept art we were seeing before at the start, which wasn't Lego, I'm just showing you a bit of steampunk. And just from having seen a bunch of steampunk mocks and other steampunk things in the past, your sort of darker, duller palettes, like uh, your golds and your browns and your, your, your grays and, and all, all of those sorts of colors, are perfect for steampunk. So if that's an aesthetic you're approaching, uh, going for a color scheme like that can work well. You know, it's a dark red maybe thrown in there, maybe even a bit of dark green perhaps, you know. The little things like that, sort of a more dulled color scheme. Nothing too bright or out there. Definitely a bigger focus on mechanical and industrial looks uh, is, is what those colors really invoke. And I think that's really cool. I especially love the addition of the, the chrome silver drills on this Mark One. They're awesome pieces coming from the old Rock Raider theme of sets. Great theme. Uh, but also just uh, the sort of big, strong chrome look to them does have this more mechanical and um, industrial look to it, which fits steampunk perfectly. So that's great. And also um, Kupaka's mask there in brown or Kopaka. Because for whatever reason, I grew up saying Kupaka, even though there's no you there. But I, I just that's what I said. And that's how I continue to say it. My bad. But using Kapaka's mask there, uh, he has the scope eye on there, which is so steampunk. That's so perfect. Um, so really great mask choice there to get that steampunk look. Got a few things like some tubing thrown in there too, and a bit, a bit of a stronger focus on uh, a lot of the sort of grey or silver areas on this mock, looking very mechanical, having a more kind of greebled texture to them, whether that's the tubing or just some of the general looks of the pieces, having a bit more of a detailed mechanical look to them. Uh, it's perfect, you know? It looks so industrial and mechanical, which is exactly what you want, you know? So that's great to see. And really interesting to see just how much is in the colour scheme uh, on a steampunk mock. Let's so move on to the next one. This is also by Cameron, and you know, typically I don't like to feature someone twice in the same video, but he had two perfect mocks for this episode, so I really wanted to highlight both of them. This one's called uh, Clockwork Hound, it's by Cameron, of course, uh, but... What's so cool about this is the strong focus on gears. You know, this mock doesn't necessarily have a smokestack coming out of it for that steampunk look, but it has those older propellers as well, which definitely invokes certain elements of olden day Victorian era technology and, uh, uh, you know, it just, just fits the aesthetic well. But yeah, the stronger focus on gears very much gives it this mechanical look, and that's perfect. And Bionicle has so many gear elements related to it, as do just general Technic sets. So it's uh, something you might have a lot of in your collection, and, you know, if you're not somebody who likes to put gear functions in your mocks, and I will put my hand up to that, I, I, I always appreciate it when people do, but it's, yeah, it's just not my jam. Um... You could design a mock that uses a bunch of gears and just has that gear aesthetic look to it because it's just a cool, juicy, nice aesthetic, you know? Something else that Cameron's done really well on this mock is it, for the most part, and you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't really see anything. These pieces are all pretty old 
in terms of just when they came out. You know, there's not really any modern, you know, CCBS elements in this. And according to Flickr, these pictures were taken on uh, March 11th, 2010, uh, which was the year Bionicle ended, if I'm correct. But regardless, a lot of these pieces seem to be in the more sort of early 2000s and uh, you know, not even hitting the mid-2000s here for when they were released. Just, just judging it by eye, maybe I'm wrong, but for the most part, they look older. And I think that's a great idea, too, to actually play around with older pieces to produce this older aesthetic. That's a great idea, and it makes this mock really pop and uh, really sets it apart from others. It's awesome. Especially I love the inclusion of the eyes being trans-yellow here. Trans-yellow is a colour that you can associate, you know, more specifically, of course, with the classic space theme from the 80s. Uh, but also just the general colour of that trans-yellow. It looks like a sort of more olden day dulled light of some kind, you know, one that isn't, uh, you know, modern and has that you know, really high uh, blue, like, Kelvin to it uh, that uh, you know, makes it really bright and shiny and modern. It has that sort of duller orange temperature to it, uh, which is, you know, kind of just how lighting was back in the day. Uh, so I think that's also very fitting, a kind of establishing a time period for this, both in the meta sense, but also in the Lego sense, you know, which is, which is cool. I like that a lot. Um, so that's super unique. And speaking of super unique, I love the general just, uh, this is why I put cameras mock in this, I can't stop talking about it. Um, this is the general look of this, of this, this two-legged beast with this giant head. That's also just unique. That's also just different, you know? You don't see, uh, uh, you know, you don't certainly don't see creatures in the real world that look like that. It is this more, uh, unique and different aesthetic and design, uh, for a character, for a, you know, a character concept. It's really cool. I like that a lot. So I could keep talking about this. But i got other mocks to cover, but uh, really good job, Cameron. There's a lot going on here that uh, both fits steampunk well uh, and also is just uh, very different uh, from you, what you see every day. That's awesome. Uh, this next mock's by Patrick Biggs, and it's called Welcome Aboard the Friendly Skies. So th this is an example of making a steampunk mock that really doesn't have anything to do with gears or machines or doesn't necessarily even have that aesthetic I spoke about before. Obviously, it has little bits of grey and brown and things thrown in there, but it's a little bit of a departure from the typical aesthetic we were seeing before, but I would still classify it under that steampunk banner. And that's more down to, like, his big goggles, the big beard that he's got, this, this uh, longer jacket design here. He looks like someone who would pilot those steampunk machines. And he does look, uh, you know, like he is sort of in, you know, typical 19th century sort of era, but he also does look like he is in, um, you know, you, you, one of those made-up steampunk worlds. He's some daring adventurer who travels the skies in his, uh, you know, his big steamboat thing. Uh, you know, much like the one on the stand here, which um, which is cool. And I love that. I love that idea of, of building a mock that looks like it could fit in that universe and doesn't necessarily uh, follow the specific rules of steampunk. Not that I'm going to say there's necessarily any rules of steampunk, but, you know, he's slightly breaking the rules that I established before. Not that I'm the governor on these said rules, but, you know. Um, and it's, it still fits and it still works. And I definitely think the stand does play into that, of course, because the stand has those color schemes and the stand also has that little micro scale airship that he would be piloting. Um, so that is of course playing into that steampunk aesthetic as well and showing you that like, yeah, this is the captain of that ship, right? You know, um, which is very clever, of course. Uh, but yeah, no, I love that. I love that a lot. Um, doing that, doing that, you know, building a character that can fit an aesthetic, but uh, doesn't always necessarily follow all the rules to a T, but uh, still has an air about him that uh, represents that world, so that's really cool. Do love the jacket on this mock, of course. Uh, beautiful flow to it, playing with some flex tube elements there. Flex tube is just a great piece to play around with because you can bend it and shape it and uh, you know, make it really work the way that you want it to for whatever specific design you're focusing on, which is great. So yeah, it's an awesome mock by Patrick that uh, fits Steampunk very well. Let's move on to the next one by Matt Goldberg, and it's called Steam Spider. Again, this is another mock that doesn't really have smokestacks, doesn't really have a focus on gears, but there is still that mechanical look to it, kind of more in the grey areas here, a few gears thrown in here and there, but also the more rusted, uh, I always forget the name of this, this colour, I want to say it's like earth brown or medium brown or something, I don't know, but it's the brown that you got with Kupaka G2, or not Kupaka, Pohatu G2, Pohatu Masters. That's the one I'm trying to say. And that colour, I think, works very well here because it does have this more sort of rusted, olden look to it that uh, does cast your mind back to a, an older era, which, you know, fits steampunk perfectly. I also think those Liwa blades fit steampunk perfectly. 
those ones used for the legs here specifically. They almost look like it's kind of been a repurposed, you know, like windmill element or something, or from a certain perspective, it almost looks like something you might find on an olden day uh, plane or something. Uh, and it looks like it's been repurposed to build this uh, interesting robot, um, which is cool and, and unique and different. Um, so it's a great way of playing with those pieces for sure. And I think fits the aesthetic very well. The idea of kind of, yeah, taking elements from trains or, you know, different other bits of machinery or in industrial elements and uh, repurposing them and putting them onto a mech of some kind, I think very much fits with the aesthetic. I think that's perfect. I love the little pop of pink for the eyes there as well. That's great. And I love the turrets at the top there using a few system pieces. Uh, very much fits with the color scheme. It just looks great. It's cool. It's very well done. So great work there, Matt. Next one. This is by Jason Corlett and is called Steam Ogre. So here's another example of using a few... Uh, smoke stacks, putting some uh, you know smoke billowing out of the mock to give it that real industrial look, like it's powered by, by uh, by 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 coal and steam and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's a, a great idea to play around with those ice cream elements. So you might have a few ice cream pieces from different city sets or friends sets or any kind of Lego set that might have come with an ice cream piece. Uh, and one awesome connection with those is you can actually stack them. Uh, the connection itself is decently sturdy. If you whack it, you know, hard enough, it does sort of separate. It's not necessarily legal, that connection. Uh, I say that with inverted commas. You can't see them, but I am doing them with my fingers because, yeah, it's kind of illegal, but it's also kind of not because I don't really think it's putting stress on the piece. But, yeah, the whole definition of that uh, it term illegal is, uh, is, is, is a funny one. Um, but regardless, it's a connection you can do and you can play with, and it looks perfect. It looks exactly like... A smokestack billowing out of something so um, that's something you could play with for sure but overall this design is super super cool it's going with a little bit more of a system heavy approach as i don't think any bionicle on this mock no but there's always a lot we can learn from a good system mock this mock is using elements like droid arms different clips or bars or other really tiny mechanical elements and this sort of stuff can really help you achieve that greeble heavy look. And you just don't get elements that are that small with Bionicles. It's always good to play around with your system elements and, and get that look, you know? Because I always find that. I always find when I'm you know, really knuckling down on a design, grabbing a lot of those really tiny system pieces, they're, they're very easy to play with because they often have a few connection points to them. And, you know, you can have, you know, maybe four or five of them attached and it doesn't cover up a lot of surface area, but then you're starting to develop these interesting textures with them. And I think those textures can very much lend themselves to a steampunk design because, you know, the more sort of densely packed smaller pieces like that can look a little bit more like, uh, you know, mechanical details and things like an engine or something. So it works well, you know, play around with your smaller system pieces because they can get a design that looks like this, very mechanical, very machine based. It's perfect. It's cool. Let's move on to the second last mock today. This is by Paul. Good old Paul. Uh, and it's called Lego Steampunk Heart. So some fun stuff going on in this. And one thing I just like about it, it's a very unique way of playing with pieces. And it's a really cool design as well. Just building a heart with bionicle elements. It's surprisingly something I've actually seen done before. But still, it's very different and very unique with uh, the way that people typically play with bionicle pieces, building humanoid characters or building, you know, living beings or rahi or animals or you know, whatever. Building, I guess, a heart technically is a you know it's a functioning thing, you know, I guess. But you know, you know what I mean. It, it's it, it's taking a departure from more humanoid style characters, like you know, is the vast majority of bionicle creations. And I always love seeing stuff like that. It's great to depart from the norm like that on a mock. And what a great way to do it too, of giving it this steampunk aesthetic or having all these tubes flowing through it. The addition of the little compass element there, that's a really fun little addition there. That's great. And the color scheme too, your dark reds, your silvers, your grays, your golds. It very much fits that steampunk look. This looks like a very, you know, living, functional, uh, artificial robotic heart. It's cool. It, it's, it's probably what's inside those humanoid bionicle characters we build, you know. It's cool. It's really cool. So a really great and unique design here. Fitting with that steampunk look, mainly in the colour scheme. And let's move on to the last mock here, which is by Mike Neves, and is called Winderven. So this is cool, and especially, again, fitting with that colour scheme, playing around with your browns, your greys, your golds, all that sort of stuff, fitting with uh, steampunk well. But I like that idea of, yeah, elements of kind of repurposing, you know, like the, the wings specifically, which kind of fits in with the name. They look a little bit like windmill pieces that have been repurposed and used to create a, a wing design on a mechanical dragon that someone has built. Of course, these pieces, I believe, would have come on different pirate ship sets. 
Uh, but it looks like, you know, it looks like they could also work for a Lego windmill of some kind and has been, yet yeah, repurposed here. Um, in, a, in an in-story sense, you know, whoever designed this, this mechanical dragon would have done that. Of course, Mike designed this in the real world and, you know, in the description he more or less said that. He, he actually said a wondrous windmill wyvern, uh, which was built by Team Steam. Team Steam includes him, Architect, and five, 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 uh, which are people on Flickr. Of course, check the links in the description. You can check out their stuff. They're, all three of them are very, very talented builders. Uh, but, yeah, I just like that idea of it looking like it's repurposed. All these different mechanical elements that have been taken from a bunch of other machines. Those elements have come together to build this. It's cool. Love the neck design on this uh, Barnacle character here using one of those uh, Life on Mars tubing pieces that also came in uh, that orange color in Mars mission sets in a slightly more recent wave. Uh, but what's cool about those is you could very easily feed like uh, CCBS elements through that tubing uh, so that you can actually pose that tube and it's not just a, a more static element, uh, which is cool. It's a really uh, great way of doing it. But yeah, really nice design and very much fits with the aesthetic that we've been talking about, which has been steampunk. And this has been the steampunk episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's been a whole bunch of different steampunk mocks for you today. If you want to check out the mocks that we uh, were talking about today in a little bit more detail, or yeah, like I said, check out some of the other things these, build these builders have built. Check the links in the description below. You can check out all their stuff there. There'll be links just there. And also in the description, there'll be links to my social media. You can check out some of the other things that I've got going on in other different places. But additionally, you can also check out the submission email for the show. So if you're like, man, I want to have my mock featured on the Bionicle Inspiration series, you can submit it to the email you're currently seeing on your screen right now. And I will add it to the list when it gets submitted. All you got to do is you know, send a few pictures and whatever kind of description you want in that email. Uh, send it to me and I'll add it to the list and one day they'll be featured on the show. But do bear in mind I get a whole bunch of submissions. Uh, so your patience is key, but I do my best to feature as much as I can. Uh, and yes, it'll take time, but I intend to get there in the end as I whack my headphones on my desk unintentionally. Additionally, of course, if you're like, man, I love listening to these. I wish Ben would post more. Well, you can always head on over to my Patreon if you're interested in supporting that because I do post a weekly podcast over there and we're getting into a, a whole bunch more episodes now. So uh, you can always stay tuned for that uh, if you are currently a patron, of course, or if you're not and you would like to view some of that content consider supporting if you're interested. But that's been it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.